Co-star um, and sometimes director Carl Weathers is also here today. Um, he's going to be right up after you. Yeah. Um, you know, can you tell me anything about like working with him, like both you know, in front of and behind the camera? What's it like uh, yeah. when that kind of switch has to happen there? Carl's so much fun. I love Carl. <laughs> I love him. Um, he's so much fun to work with. I love working with actors that are directors because they have a very, very different way of talking to you and, and helping you understand motivations. And, and I think that a lot of times they can simplify things because they understand the way that you would understand things. So for Carl, it, he's no different. You know, we, we, uh, he, he also works in, in a very visual way. And, and, and so we understand each other that way. I mean, you have to, when you have a helmet on, they, you have to learn to move your body in a very, very different way to make sure that you're conveying small emotions. Because there is a way to do it. You know, um, you see it in Mando, the way he tilts his head, the way he moves his body, the way he shifts his weight. Like, all of that stuff is picked up, and it leads you emotionally in a different direction, and in, in the direction they want you to go in. So Carl is very, very, very on top of that, and he wants to make sure that, that those things are caught and, and paid attention to, because it's very easy to think you're doing something, and it's not reading, because you're thinking it, but it's not big enough. Um, and so he's, he, I love working with him, he's fantastic. In fact, we just talked about, you know, he's directing so much now that, that we're tr gonna try and work together outside of Star Wars, so, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, big fan of his as well. Um, so guys, I've only got a few more questions, so if you wanna start lining up over here at the microphone, Katie will be happy to answer your questions here. Um, I've, got, I've got to ask you this because I'm here, um, and this is completely off the wall, so I, I don't want this to throw you or anything, but when I think of you, I have so many you know, images that come to my mind, but one of them is a little short film you did in 2015 with Joseph Kahn. I think you know what I'm talking about. Does anybody else know what I'm talking about? There we go. How did you find yourself making a gritty Power Rangers short film I'm opposite James Vanderbeek? How did this happen? Well, I love Power Rangers and I love Dawson's Creek, so yeah, right. <laughs> it's like, James Vanderbeek and what? <laughs> of course I'll do that. Now, it, it, you know, um, uh, my manager has a, has a talent for finding weird, obscure things that he's like, I think this would be really cool. Do you want to play a, a alcoholic, drug addicted, homeless person in workaholics? Sure. sure. That sounds fun. Um, and then this was no different. He was like, they're they're doing a short fan video um, for Power Rangers, but it's gonna be like super dark. Do you wanna be in it? And I was like, absolutely. That sounds awesome. <laughs> to play, play the Pink Ranger? Yeah. It's just one more box I got to check off my childhood <laughs> dreams. Well, and I remember because that was when like there was rumors of a new version of Power Rangers movie coming out and everything. And I thought like- And Saban okay, was like, no. Yeah, I know. And I was just thinking to myself like, I need to see this movie right Survive. here. It was so cool. Who has seen that short film? Everyone? I, you guys need you to find seen this. It, you go watch it. It's on YouTube. But I think that there is that there is an audience for both. I think that there is a Power Rangers for for people who love the originals, love what they were, love what they stand for. Um, and um, um, I think that there is. Sorry, I just thought of Jason. <laughs> so no, I, I we lost him, and and I just thought of him, and and he's a, a loss to the to the Power Rangers world and yeah. family. So. Um, um, mental health is real. Take care of yourselves. Yeah. There's no shame in asking for help. I just want to put that out there. So, absolutely. absolutely. Um, so there's a, there is a world where that exists, but I also think that for people who grew up watching Power Rangers, who have who have who are grown adults now, who want to see something grittier, there's a world for that too. I think we could have had both. Yeah. It's two different audiences, in my opinion. Well, let's get that, let's get the views up on that YouTube video and get, get that thing made. Um, so I also wanted to say, uh, I think it was announced you're gonna be appearing in the Ahsoka uh, Tano series. Is that true? <laughs> no? Ah, <laughs> uh, the I internet fails me again. News to me. <laughs> okay, let's catch it like this. Do you want her to be in the Ahsoka Tano series? Uh? <laughs> I think that there is a world where Bo-Katan makes sense in that in that yeah. universe, so we'll see. Yeah, absolutely there. Um, all right, well, I only have uh, one more thing I need to ask you. All right, I know we want to keep these things light and fun and stuff like that, but this is very serious, and we're going to get through it together, okay? But <laughs> I have to ask you about something called uh, bitch pudding. <laughs> has Every, anybody, does anybody know what I'm talking about here? <laughs> 
what on earth is this? How did this happen? So let me tell you as well how bitch pudding is related to Bo-Katan. Yes! Okay. Bitch Pudding is a robot chicken character created by Matt and Seth. Seth Green and, and uh, yes, anyway, okay, so they wanted us to play ourselves from Battlestar Galactica. Um, I went in, I recorded that, I was done really fast. I notoriously say they're cheap, so they were like, well, we can't let her go yet, we paid for 30 minutes. Um, and they said, how do you feel about recording some more characters? And one of them was Bitch Pudding. And I was like, <laughs> What is she? And he was like, she's like an eight-year-old drug-addicted strawberry shortcake. And I was like, oh, that sounds like fun. Sure. And I recorded Bitch Puddin, and she became like this fan favorite because she's... Oh, some of the things that have come out of my mouth <laughs> playing this character are so horrific. <laughs> That like if you're if you, if your child would be expelled from school. Yeah. Like you can't. It's awful. Anyway, so flash fast flash forward. Um, Dave Filoni is friends with those guys, and Dave was going to cast someone as Bo-Katan. Dave wanted to make sure that I'm not a complete raving bitch. <laughs> so he called Seth and Matt and said, "What does she like to work with?" And they said, "We love Katie." So I got Bo-Katan. There it is. <laughs> so through robot all, chicken. <laughs> through robot chicken. So Bitch Quinn is like Bo-Katan's cousin. There you go. There you go. You'll find those videos. They're hilarious. All right. Let's, uh, let's go to some audience questions. What do you say here? Yeah. All right. Let's speak up really nice and loud into the microphone. Uh, give us your name and what you'd like to ask Katie. How's it going, Katie? Hi. What do you, what do you hear? Nothing but the rain. <laughs> Uh, I, my name's Steve. I have less of a question, and I, actually, I just want to say thank you. Um, before, it, when I was younger, I, I did a lot of background work, and a lot of the experiences were boring and miserable. But you, background work is boring and miserable. <laughs> uh, one day on set with you was probably my most positive experience, and I was on 24, and we were doing a stunt. And my job for the day was to block the 110 freeway sign because we were setting in New York. Yeah. And so I couldn't move while Keeper's running down the street chasing you and shooting you. Yes. <laughs> and at one point it just would another back to one. And as you're walking past me, I went, oh, frack. <laughs> and she turns around and does this. <laughs> we, and then we had to go back to work. But, so for the next four takes, she's running towards me, and I'm still smiling like an idiot. <laughs> and so they had to finally say, dude, you're getting shot at. Stop smiling. So they had to turn my face away from the camera. But it was, it was, that was probably my, my favorite day on set. So. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much. You know, I, I appreciate you so much. A movie is only as good as every single person on set. So there is no there is no one person that does not matter to the production. So um, it is a team uh, a, a team effort and um, um, I, I love to have fun on set and be weird and funny and try and keep people entertained because it's long crazy days. So oh, of yeah. I loved you in twenty four as well. Amazing. Thank you amazing so much. Uh, I'm the see. only character that's ever been double tapped by Jack Bauer and killed. <laughs> So, I was not very good. <laughs> uh, you, what's your name and what do you want to ask Katie? Uh, my name's... Whoa. Does that work? It works, right? You can, you can tilt it down if you want. Hello? There you go. Hi. Okay. My name's Hunter. Um, I got a real burning question. Do you like cats better or dogs? Cats or dogs? Wow, this is a big question. I'm allergic to cats. Oh, well. Okay. <laughs> so dogs. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. It's, it's the right answer anyway, am I right? I mean, come on now. Hey, guys, really quick before this, I wanted to do something. Yes. And I want to do this before some people leave, because I noticed some people leave, and they're going to be really upset if it was their chair. Yeah. So, I said on my TikTok, and I think on my Instagram, that I was going to do raffles at every convention I went to and give the money to a children's charity local. Well, unbeknownst to me, there are laws around raffles in every state, and it's really difficult, so I didn't want to get, like, sued. <laughs> um, so, I'm going to personally donate money to Dornbecker. However, um, I'm going to give the helmet away. So, under a chair, there is an envelope. Check them. And someone may not be sitting in the chair. And if, if, if someone finds it, 
We got so, it right there. You found it? Amazing. Okay. You get a signed Bogotan helmet. Woo! So, congratulations. I'll give it to you afterwards. If you just want to come up after the, the q and is over, I'll sign it for you over here, and then you can have your helmet. I hope it doesn't become an inconvenience because you have to carry it around. You can wear it. Yeah, wear it on your head. I so, mean. <laughs> congratulations. I'm going to do this at every convention I go to and give money to a local children's charity. So. There you go. There you Thank go. You. Awesome. And I also appreciate everybody in your photo op. I know it's inconvenient. Normally I would love and hug all over you, but my daughter is immune compromised, so I'm, I'm just trying to stay as safe as possible for her. So um, it will not be forever, but for right now I'm wearing a mask as much as possible, and I'm trying not to shake hands and things like that just to protect my child. So thank you so, so much for your understanding of that. I really, really appreciate you. So thank you. Excellent. Excellent. There you go. All right. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Uh, Robot Chicken, one of my favorite <laughs> putting one of my favorite sketches, so thank you for that. You're welcome. Um, in Battlestar Galactica, world building, it's remarkable for like other shows, and with your character specifically, there are so many twists and turns, so was there ever a storyline or a plot that showed up that surprised you? And even though you went with the wind, I'm just curious. Yeah, I mean, listen, nobody knew who the final five were, so that was like a really, really big thing. That was crazy. I mean, spoiler, sorry if you haven't seen yeah. it, but it was 15 years ago. What years, guys, if you don't want to know. <laughs> it might have been 20 years ago at this point, but when Starbuck died, mm -hmm. that was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> like, I was like, I'm out of a job? <laughs> and then I made sure, like, I got a phone call from the guys, and they were like, so we're going to say something to you, and then we're going to explain but we're gonna kill you. Do we, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> but I think that storyline for me was the biggest, like, what? What, W2F? Yeah, yeah, it was a little crazy. Because then I came back and I knew I had to play her differently. That wasn't Starbuck that came back. It was someone who was trying to embody Starbuck to, to help humanity and lead them in a certain direction. So it wasn't her. So she feels unhinged in that season. And some people hate it, some people love it, but I didn't want to come back and just play her like Starbuck. I wanted her to feel different. Um, anyway, yeah, because she was very different. And I don't know what she was, guys. <laughs> no fucking idea. I think she was an angel. I don't know, but I know she's not a Cylon. Take that. Thank you. There you go. In this, what's it like working with her? She's go. hysterical. So I cannot say if I have worked with Amy Sedaris or not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I love her. And I love, like, you know, we've, we've had the pleasure uh, um, a few times. And she is such a talent. And um, her character is so crazy. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things that I love so much is that when I work with any actor or see any actor that gave everything they had to something and like completely didn't worry about, they're just completely uninhibited and they just went for it. That's fun. Oh my gosh. It's fun and it's infectious and she is um, a prime example of that. If anyone hasn't seen Strangers with Candy, which you're kind of referring to, oh my gosh, <laughs> see Unhinged that way. Thank you so much. Yeah. I do love the like diplomaticness that you're doing. It's just like, nope, won't say it, can't say it. <laughs> you guys, I've gotten so good at lying to y'all. <laughs> <laughs> there really are Star Wars people back there just waiting to blow dart us. Uh, what's, your, uh, what's your name? What's your question? Hi, my name's Emily, and the question I got for you is, to be honest, how much does the Mandalorian armor weigh Ooh, that you have to wear? It's a good question. So, when you, if I were to like put it in a bag and weigh it, it doesn't weigh that much. But when you put it on your body and you have all the braces that hold you into it and they hold you in a certain position all day long with your shoulders back and then pulled down because of the, it is awful. <laughs> Um, I developed a cyst in my shoulder from the pressure and like because you can't get your hands up But my character has two guns, so she has to like I mean, it's it's Look, it's a dream come true. I'm not gonna lie. It's pretty freaking cool. I'm not complaining um, I'm just whinging a little bit. It's not fun. It's it's heavy um, But it's so cool, you know, but it, 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 it 16 hours a day for that many months is a long time to be in one outfit yeah. 
Ouch. Well, thank you very much. I will see you later for an autograph. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, something else really funny, too. It's a jumpsuit, which, thanks, guys. <laughs> So, as a good Pacific Northwest girl who has peed outside many times, <laughs> I thought to myself, I could squat. Give me a zipper. Do something. So we put a zipper in. Yay. It didn't work, guys. Oh, no. oh. Thankfully, I have two suits. <laughs> Trial and error. Trial and error. It didn't work. And a she cuppy whatever thingy doesn't work. <laughs> Just squat. Just squat. There you go. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're learning so many things about the Mandalorian today. <laughs> All right, what's your name? What's your question? Hi, Katie. My name's Priyanka. Uh, just to follow up to her question, how many people did it take to put on the suit? So I've got it down to a science at this point. My dresser is, her name is Val. Um, we would never be able to do this ourselves, by the way, um, because there's just so many moving parts. But Val and I got it down to a science. I can have my full suit on, take it off, sprint to a bathroom, sprint back, get back in it in five minutes. <laughs> Only because a girl's gotta pee a lot. And you heard how badly it goes if I try not. <laughs> so we, we got it really fast, but the first time we did it, I think it took us about 15 minutes just to get into it. Because it's all about trying to, I move my body to help her and she zips and all of these things. But I can get myself into about 75% of it on my own now. Um, and then she helps with the rest of it. Okay. Uh, so actually, my question was about Battlestar Galactica. I've been watching it for the last year or so, and I've noticed Starbuck has a very antagonistic relationship with so many people, and uh, especially Colonel Ty. So I was wondering, uh, how is that filming experience like, and do you relate to any of the personality traits of Starbuck? I related to her a lot when I was playing her. Um, I, I, I say all the time that I, I could not go back and play Starbuck now. She's so angsty. She's so youthful and so destructive of everything in her path. I don't know if I could do that. I mean, I, I, you know, I'd try, but I don't know if I could. Um, she would be different. Um, I, I believe firmly in, in when they say action, you're a million percent in character, but I also believe when they say cut, we should have fun. Mm -hmm. um, because if you're not having fun, why are you doing it? Um, and so it, that show is just so much fun to, to be on and to work with those people. And we spent so many, so many hours um, working on that show. Um, many, many long days. And M Michael Hogan is um, a, just a gift. He's such a gift as a person and as a performer. He's a phenomenal man. Okay, thank you yeah, so much. Thank you. Good question, thank you. All right, sir. Hi, I'm Kevin, this is Harley. Hello. Uh, I, you kind of answered my question earlier whether or not Starbuck may have been a Cylon, but what's it like reading those scripts and on set with, with everyone? Are you like betting on, oh, you, who's a Cylon? Or, <laughs> oh, I read this script, I think I'm a Cylon. What was that like? No, I don't think, I know that the final five were called in and told. Um, ahead of time, because nobody should read that and be like, wait a second, what? Um, and, and I knew from day one that, that Starbuck and Adama were not Cylons, because we were told that. Um, but that everybody else was fair game. That's what Ron <laughs> said. So, um, so I can't speak for them, but I know that Aaron Douglas was incredibly angry when he found out. And so was Hogan, I think, yeah. Excellent. Thank Excellent you. question, sir. Thank you. All right, we got about like five more minutes here, so let's I'm see. Sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll answer faster. Yeah, we'll crank them out here. Uh, quickly, what's your name? What's your question? Hi, my name's Alex, and I was wondering, for future uh, filmmakers, do you have any advice for them? Did you say for a future filmmaker, do I have any Filming advice? Advice, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> no, you're okay. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, I would say trust your instincts, um, don't take no for an answer. Um, and just always follow your passion um, and try to figure out what about you and your style of filmmaking, what makes you different and special, and then hold on to that and make that your thing. Thank you. Excellent. Absolutely. All right. Look at that. All right. What's your question? 
Um, my name is Bob. Before I go to my question, I just want to give you a little factoid. If you remember, a couple years ago at SummerCon, uh, the issue came up about you being the first person in Star Wars to go from the voice acting to live action. And I got curious afterwards. I looked it up. I researched it as far as I can. You're the first person anywhere. Oh, anywhere to ever. Anywhere in anything wow. to go from at, from voice acting to live acting with the same character. Wow. Man called Guinness. <laughs> For real, though. I'm actually considering doing that in, in reality. But my question is, have we seen the last of Eminent Black? Have I seen the last of? Amunet Black on the flesh. Oh. <laughs> I love Amunet Black, you guys. I yes. mean, she's so stupid and crazy. <laughs> um, I love her so much. I don't think we're gonna see her again. I haven't gotten a phone call. Um, I just, I, what a gift to be able to play that character. She's just nuts. <laughs> just nuts. Yes, uh, as, as you can tell, looking at me right now, I love nuts. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Thank you. All right. Next question, please. Uh, hi there. Uh, my name is Robert Baldwin. And uh, I was wondering for if, if you're like a comic book fan, uh, say, like, uh, between like DC and Marvel, which one would you pick? Oh, between DC and Marvel, which one would you pick? Right now, I DC. There you go. Yeah, I would. I think that there's more properties out there to, to find and hone. So. Excellent. Popular question for a Comic-Con. <laughs> right? right, Have yeah. you guys read The Cleaning Room? By the way, if you're sci-fi fans and you like graphic novels and comic books, try The Cleaning Room. Amazing. There you go. All right. <laughs> this is, I can't see a thing in this helmet. <laughs> Trust me, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> so, I have two quick questions. One is, my first question is, do you... I've been looking at the, watching all the Clone Wars episodes from top to bottom. However, there are some unfinished Clone Wars arcs and I'm curious to know, do you think Dave Filoni will be able to finish some of the rest of these Clone Wars arcs? Mm. Um, I think that in Dave Filoni's mind, he already has. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so it's just a matter of him getting the opportunity and if he's given that opportunity, I, I'm sure he intends to. And my, thank you. my second question is, I know your daughter is sick, and if there's anything I'll be able to do to help, I'll be there. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. That was and, very, very kind of you. Uh, thank you. And I, I bought this so that I, to honor you and your daughter. Excellent. And as a gift? This will help you. Oh, sweetheart. I want you to know you're a good mom. <laughs> and that show your daughter that you never, never give up. There you go. This will go to Dorn Becker as well, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right. You're beautiful. Thank you. Alright guys, I think we only have time for one last question here, unfortunately, so let's, uh, no pressure or anything, okay? No pressure. Um, well, I'm a mom and I'm a teacher, and um, one of my things that's like a goal for both of those roles is empowering young women. And you've really done that in your roles, you've really portrayed this strong female character, and I was wondering if that's something that you really, like that was a goal of yours, and also, if they ever remake Aliens, would you play Sigourney Weaver? <laughs> Look at this, we're casting you and everything right you now. You are, listen, fan cast away. I love Sigourney and I would love to work with her and I love Alien and I would love to do that. Um, I didn't intend to, to play strong women that inspired young girls and women. But I'm so honored to be able to do that. I don't know if you guys saw this, but mental health for me is a really, really big deal. Uh, one of my best friends took his own life a few years ago. Um, the CDC just came out with a study that said that 23% of girls under the age of 18 have contemplated suicide and 13% have tried. It's terrifying. 
So, we have to inspire not only young girls, but young children all over, that they are special, that bullying is wrong, raise your children to understand that to love and respect each other. I know you guys know this, you're here, this is a sci-fi community, this is an inclusive community, so I know that. But just protect our babies, you know what I mean? It's so scary. So for me to be able to play strong women and inspire young girls and young boys and people everywhere to be strong and vulnerable, because vulnerability is strong, <laughs> um, is so freaking cool. So I love that, I love that you love Sigourney, I love that these characters keep inspiring people, so I will play them as long as you guys need them and as long as you watch them because I need them too, so. We will keep watching. Everyone, here one more time for Katie Sackle!